have books if anybody's interested. I have them. They've got half of my face on the front, but more importantly, they got the FDR drive. If you've never seen that, it's freaking sweet. I don't know. This is what it looks like. You know, you can see me. I'll give them to you for money or something, and then we can do that. All right. So I'm gonna do another poem. Yes. New York, it's, it's quiet, like the burglars are coming out getting you. Like, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> Where's my ball? You know. All right. Okay, this poem I'm gonna do. It requires you. Do you guys know who O.J. Simpson is? <laughs> Two weeks before he got arrested in the theater. You was hanging out with him or something? Everybody hit yourself, brother. They're going to take me. Vegas is sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this poem, I wrote I wrote this poem. This is, this is to a girl. Um, she's right now serving like double life in prison in upstate New York right now. She uh got jumped in like the middle of the afternoon. She got jumped. And then um, during the fight, my hands are a knife. They say, Watch out! Stabs a girl, kills the girl, right? And the judge deemed it like self-defense, but because the girl was being like rowdy in court, like, yo, yo, I don't understand me. He said, hey, if you don't settle down, we'll throw the book at you, put you into the jail. He didn't say that many words, but you know, that's what he saying. And um, she kept going. He locked her up, gave her 90, he gave her 24 to life plus 99 and 99. Yo, I, if you want, you got the link to her stuff. But um, the illest thing about it is it happened like two blocks away from the War Memorial Stadium, or O.J. Simpson played football for the Buffalo Bills. So it's like kind of like he gave her his whole sentence. And then O.J. went and pulled a robbery just to rub it in her face or something. All right, so, so here we go. Tracy, your childhood was fixed. Stacked against you since birth. You learned to crawl on broken glass and cry in reverse. Child of no significance. Damaged rough around the edges, you were never a fairy princess. Nobody ever came to your tea parties. Sweet 16s curdled, sour and alone, how did it feel on your side of the tracks? With Christmas presents wrapped in blunt paper. Easter dresses boiled in baking soda, parents ziplocked in nickel bags, youth gone up and smoked before high school. You were an upside down girl, dressed in an inside out woman's attitude. How are we ever supposed to understand you? There were never any after-school specials insulting enough to mock you with the context, Tracy. Which lucky penny failed you? Which shooting star ignored your wishes with which inverted horseshoe can we hang blame for you becoming this tangle of cliché, knotted and raveled, rough women like you? Fit outside of our priorities because you choose bandanas instead of doilies. Choose to fight instead of curtsy. Your tongue too lawless. Hands too exposed. The fuse too short. Tracy, you should have been born a boy. Handsome with a killer smile. Universal athletic build. Running back hands. Quarterback feet. Defensive drive. Offensive power. Tracy, aggression would have been talent then. Colleges would have fought over you then. Would have wanted to polish you two times all American shiny. Heisman Trophy shimmer. Number one draft pick. Brilliant Tracy. Life would have been easier had you looked like a Super Bowl ring. Had you worn a Buffalo Bills jersey in the 1970s, been the first to rush 2,000 yards in one season, Tracy, your face could have been on a football card. And we could have learned to value you, could have learned to consider you important. Even after that stadium you played in felt trampled by bulldozers, we would not have forgotten you, small town girl. How does it feel to be incidental? Mm -hmm. On the backswing of our helping hands, you were both crises and distraction, unworthy of a soapbox. Your prison was the rug we swept you under like dust. Tracy, ask us what was on television when you became a mother too soon. Who was in the playoffs that year? You got jumped on Glenwood. Tracy, when you killed that woman, when you killed Tracy, when you killed that woman, you should not have been just some girl consumed by the double standards of our two-faced civility. You should have been a jealous ex-husband with six pro bowls under your belt. Hollywood smog in your back pocket. Tracy, when you killed that woman, where the fuck was your white Bronco? Why? Johnny Cochran never watched you run with a football because you never sold us insurance and rental cars in the airport because you never starred in a movie alongside Leslie Nielsen. They had no judicial magic trips up their sleeves for you. Couldn't pull an acquittal from behind the judge's ear for you. Bloody knives couldn't disappear for you. Bloody gloves could disappear for you, Tracy. We're never famous enough to get away with murder, too.